Hey there, boys and girls, my squids and squidettes. It is your beautiful, your lovely, your immutable, yammy noob, shammy cube. Whammy, dude? One of those ought to work. You may have seen our recent video about the most expensive motorcycles from each manufacturer. Well, that seemed to offend all the cheap skates in the audience. So to make it up to you today, I'm going to highlight the least expensive motorcycles from every manufacturer. And I'm using the exact same list of manufacturers that I used last time. So if I forgot a brand, then chances are I forgot it today as well. Sorry, but I don't think that many people care about what the least expensive motorcycle from Norton or BSA is. They also sell like two bikes a year. so. Go figure it out yourself. Anyway, let's get into it. We're back with Honda at the top today. The least expensive motorcycle from Honda is of course the Honda Grom. They have other small mini bikes like the Honda Navi that are cheaper but has a single speed CVT transmission which makes it closer to a scooter and I have to draw the line somewhere. The Grom is a classic 125cc single cylinder mini bike from Honda that kids who went to an alternative high school love to install stunt cages on and terrorize their local municipalities. They're fun, low stakes hooligan machines and that is why we love them baby. It is a motorcycle that will help you forget about your adulthood woes for the low, low price of 3499 bucks. The cheapest motorcycle from Suzuki is, of course, the legendary Gixxer 250, a motorcycle near and dear to my heart. Even though it is the cheapest motorcycle, you'd likely be better off spending your five grand on just about anything else than a Gixxer 250. Or a better decision, stay tuned for the next 10 minutes and you'll be able to find a better motorcycle to spend your money on. I've said it before, the Gixxer 250 is great at standing in the face of adversity, being heavily modified in an inadvisable way, and being shot at with guns and flamethrowers and maybe a tank or two. Am I speaking from experience? Well, who knows? What it is not being good at is being a motorcycle pass on the Gixxer 250. The cheapest bike from Kawasaki is the Z125. The Z125 is Kawasaki's version of the Grom. It is the bike people buy when the Groms are all out of stock. It's the dollar store Grom. It's the Grom you have at home. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a super cheapo copy, right? Come on. Luckily, if you show up to a Grom ride on a Z125, most of the riders will have inhaled enough nitrous, they likely won't be able to tell the difference, but you'll know. Deep inside, you'll know your mini bike is inferior to the Honda Benchmark. The Kawasaki Z125 costs $3,399. Squids on a budget will hang their heads in shame at the announcement of Yamaha's least expensive motorcycle. It is not a mini bike or even the MT-03, it is the V-Star 250. I can't believe this thing is still for sale. The V-Star 250 is the crappy old cruiser that nobody cares about and you likely used on your MSF and buy used on Craigslist. Honda did the world a favor by revamping the Rebel line into sleek modern cruisers and bumping up the displacement. And now the Yamaha V-Star is just left in the dust as boomer spec carbureted bike that makes like 10 horsepower. So for Yamaha, their least expensive motorcycle is not the one to buy. It costs 4,699 bucks. That is ridiculous. Don't spend that kind of money on that. The Ducati Street Fighter V4S is a very special motorcycle, so I had to do something special for the end of this giveaway with it, which March 17th is the last day you have to get entered to win this thing. So I grew out all of my hair, and I also gave you guys 10x entries for every dollar spent on the store to win this motorcycle. Yes, March 17th is the last day you have to get entered to win it, so don't delay. Head over to shop.yamanube.co, get yourself entered to win this Ducati Street Fighter V4S by picking out anything you want on the store and you'll get 10x entries for your dollar. Don't miss it. Inexpensive and Harley Davidsons are usually not words you find in the same sentence. And since the motor company sunsetted the air-cooled Evo Sportsters, which weren't exactly inexpensive already, and those weird street models they had a few years ago, there really isn't a budget option in their lineup. The motorcycle with the price tag closest to $10,000 is the Nightster. Yeah, five figures to get into the cheapest Harley. The Nightster is the latest evolution of the Sportster ethos, but with liquid cooling. It costs $13,400. $499. Similarly, Indian Motorcycles is a company that considers themselves to be a bit more premium brand and thus doesn't cater much to the beginner or budget conscious riders. The least expensive motorcycle in their lineup is the Indian Scout 60 Bobber. The Scout 60 is a neutered version of the Scout motorcycle with a smaller engine and a lower price tag. It kind of lives in an awkward zone where it is likely too powerful or expensive for most beginners while also being marginally cheaper than the normal Scout. It costs $10,749. 
The cheapest motorcycle from Triumph is the new Trident 660. Well, I guess it's not that new anymore, is it? It's been a few years. The Trident is Triumph's entry into the beginner middleweight naked bike class, akin to motorcycles like the MT-07. In typical Triumph fashion, the Trident is powered by a 660cc three-cylinder engine. And it is kind of neat to see a small displacement triple instead of a twin that most bikes in this class use. Pretty unique. It makes about 80 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque. It has Showa suspension and Nissan brakes and cost 8,595 bucks. Pretty good for entry point of the Triumph brand if you ask me. Am I biased? Of course I am. Ducati is also a company that is not known for having particularly inexpensive motorcycles, but their Scrambler lineup has posed to be fully of budget-friendly offerings for people who still want to appreciate the charm of an air-cooled L-twin, not a V-twin. Don't you dare get it twisted. The cheapest of the Scrambler bunch is the Scrambler Icon, which has an 803cc air-cooled L-twin that makes about 74 horsepower and 48 foot-pounds of torque. But the Scrambler lineup has seen a huge tech update this year and now features a TFT dash, up and down quick shifter, and multiple rider aids. Altogether, it's not a bad package for something carrying the Ducati name coming in at $10,995. And come on, they're so good to look at. Look how good they look. Motorcycles from Aprilia can also get you a lot of bang for your buck, and the Tuono 660 is a great example of that. The Tuono 660 features a spicy 270 degree crank parallel twin that is pushing about 100 horsepower. It has semi adjustable suspension and Brembo brakes. It's an all around great bike that's perfect for round town riding or taking it to the track. The Tuono 660 costs $10,695, and if you like the sound of this motorcycle, we're actually giving away a Tuono 660 factory for our intermediate motorcycle giveaway. You can get enter to win by joining our community or purchasing riding gear on the site. Just a little shameless plug right there, hope you don't mind. Many companies have found that in order to expand their global footprint and attract more types of riders, they need to produce some motorcycles in countries with cheaper production and cost. That is exactly the case for the BMW G310GS. Now, I did want to take a moment to shout out that many international audience members are now clamoring and have probably already written comments saying that, yeah, I mean, these aren't the cheapest bikes. I have cheaper bikes by this manufacturer and where I live, I don't care where you live. I live in America. I'm doing American stuff. Don't at me. The 310 GS is manufactured in India, which is the only way anything with the BMW badge would cost less than five grand. This bike is powered by a 313cc single cylinder engine that makes 34 horse and 20 foot pounds of Torgos, which is about as much power as the old air-cooled BMW boxer motors used to make. It's a pretty basic entry-level bike with a nondescript suspension and brakes and has a base MSRP of 4,995 bucks. I think the cheapest motorcycle from MV Agusta is the F3 Rosso. I feel like MV Agusta's motorcycles have like the steepest cultural learning curve than any other manufacturer. The F3 has a 798cc three-cylinder engine that makes 147 horsepower. This fully fared motorcycle is, in my opinion, a little more attractive than some of MV's more extreme naked bikes. As Triumph would say, quote, this motorcycle has a stunning but understated style. This motorcycle costs 18,998 bucks, making it quite possibly the most least expensive, wait, the most expensive, least expensive bike on the list today. Got it. The least expensive motorcycle from Moto Guzzi is the V7 Stone. The V7 is a classic stripped back roadster that uses the iconic transverse V-twin engine as the focal point. It's got that 853cc flying V-twin sitting sideways in the frame doing them dirty like that with the cylinders extending horizontally out of the frame, begging for you to drop it and incur maximum damage. Guzzi has been using this engine design for a long time and it's become synonymous with the brand. Despite its more accessible price point, the V7 has a premium feel and components such as Brembo brakes, LED lighting, dual channel ABS, and traction control. Why do you need TC on a V Guzzi? I don't freaking know, man. The Moto Guzzi V7 Stone has an MSRP of $9,190. KTM has kind of become the gold standard for value-driven feature-packed beginner motorcycles. They had a lot of success with the Duke 390. They thought, let's make this even more approachable. And they developed the Duke 200, which has sold by the boatload in India and has been available in other markets as well. The Duke 200 has an itty bitty 200cc single cylinder engine, a six speed transmission, and Duke styling. Get Duke, baby! It doesn't have as many cool tech features as the Duke 390, but for a rider that wants to get from point A to point B for as cheap as possible, and wants a bike that is a bit more cooler looking than a farm spec dual sport and is bigger than a Grom, the Duke 200 is hard to beat at that price point, but that's a really, really narrow Venn diagram. 
This bike is an MSRP of 4,199 bucks. Husqvarna technically has two equally priced motorcycles as the least expensive in their lineup, that being the Svartpillen 401 and the Vitpillen 401. We had the Svartpillen 401 as a giveaway motorcycle a few years back and we were really impressed with how much it offered for the price point. Both motorcycles are powered by a liquid cooled 373cc single cylinder engine that makes about 44 horsepower. The Svart has a bit more of a scrambler aesthetic with semi knobby tires, spoked wheels, and a skid plate, while the Vit is styled more in the vein of a futuristic neo retro cafe racer. Just like KTM, Husky makes sure their bikes are packed with components that are slightly above what you may expect from a beginner bike like WAP WP Apex suspension, Bribery brakes. Both versions of this motorcycle cost $5,649. The last manufacturer on the list is the self proclaimed king of inexpensive motorcycles, and that is Royal Enfield. The least expensive bike on their roster is the Classic 350, coming in at just a few dollar signs cheaper than the Meteor 350. The Classic 350 has everything it needs to be technically classified as a motorcycle and not much else. It has an air cooled single cylinder engine that makes about 20 horsepower horsepower and 20 foot pounds of torque. It has classic styling with spoked wheels and a solo seat. Despite its incredibly low point of entry, it still comes equipped with ABS from the factory, which is a nice touch. The Royal Enfield Classic 350 costs just 4,595 bucks. You're not going to find many other full size motorcycles that are that inexpensive. That brings us to a triumphant conclusion. Which camp are you in? Buying the cheapest bike from the most expensive manufacturer or buying the most expensive bike from the cheapest manufacturer? Where does the Goldilocks zone truly exist? Fact, the last person born in the 1800s just died in 2017. Her name was Emma Murano from Italy. She was born in November of 1899 and passed away in April of 2017. Wow, goodbye.